Early morning in London's Vauxhall district. This is Clubland, and as Saturday turns into Sunday morning, most people are calling it a night. The gay club scene has traditionally been characterised by hedonism and drugs, but now it's morphing into something darker. As the sun comes up, many men are heading to after parties across the city. Once you try a powerful drug, and if that's linked into sex, then that's the kind of sex you've got to look for, because sober sex just doesn't match up to it. This is the world of chem sex, where the illegal drugs, crystal meth, GHB, and mephedrone are used sometimes in combination. These substances can massively boost libido and suppress inhibition and the desire to sleep. The result can be group sex parties that last for days at a time. He's the first um, partner I formally introduced to my parents as my partner. Kiran, that's not his real name, told me how he became entrenched in the chemsex scene. One day he just kind of decided, okay, that I can't be in this relationship anymore. And I think that rejection, I felt like I was losing something which was like the best relationship I'd had up to that point. Mm -hmm. So that night reactivated one of my online profiles. I went and met two guys and they said, yeah, we've got some crystal. And I said, right, let's go. So I went over there and I was there for about two days. You were there for two days? Yeah. What happened in those two days? For me, what was quite wild sex at that time. It wasn't protected all the way through. So the sort of like wildness of the sex was then linked with the drugs at that point. It became intertwined? It did, yeah. And that was the relationship between the two. It was sex and drugs, sex and drugs, always together. When it comes to it, The chemsex scene has grown alongside the popularity of hookup apps that use GPS to allow anyone with a profile to share pictures, preferences, and even their location. Dean Street in Soho is home to Europe's busiest sexual health clinic. Dave Stewart works as a therapist. He says an increasing number of men are opening up about their chem use. We have about 100 new gay men uh, accessing our chem sex support services each month. Does that worry you? That sounds like quite a high number. It is a high number. It was a surprisingly high number. There's been a lot of, there's a lack of evidence around chem sex, how much of it is associated with HIV infections. We can tell those things are linked uh, here anecdotally because we know that people are using condoms very rarely when they're high. They want to when they're sober. What do these substances actually do? What effect do they have? The things you care about when you're sober, like tomorrow, like your plans tomorrow, like the money you're spending, like the choices you're making around sexual health, they kind of don't matter that much when you're high on these drugs. That's why they're problematic. While some men see the use of these illegal drugs as recreational fun, the resulting loss of control can have life-changing implications. 70% of the time it was protected, safe sex, and about 30% of the time it was kind of like, OK, let's take a cheeky risk. And then I think as a result of that, I ended up with hepatitis C. Every couple of weeks I was having a big binge, you know. But when I found out I had HIV as well, I just thought I've got nothing left to hold back for. And then I think within a month of that, I'd started injecting. And that was just a completely different kind of high rush. Lots of people would think if you get hepatitis, that's yeah. a, a warning. That's the time to take stock and take a step back. Mm -hmm. Then you're diagnosed as HIV positive. That's the time to take stock and think, yeah. okay, maybe this isn't the right thing. Why did you keep going? I think... The drugs took me out of my mind, so I wasn't really thinking about it. I didn't need to think about it. I didn't need to sit and think about why am I here, what's led me here, what this diagnosis means, all that kind of stuff. You just It's avoidance. Kiran's story, his inability to deal with the reality of his situation, is something that I've heard about again and again when speaking to men who use these drugs. Dave Stewart suggests the men that come to see him for help are often grappling with much more deep-rooted problems. The reason so many gay men are using chems, drugs, uh, it's, it's not just hedonism. Intimacy is something we learn growing up as kids. It's something that you experience, hopefully, in your family unit where you are known intimately, warts and all, but loved and accepted and that's your safe space. 
um, I held a lot of young gay people and others are keeping a secret, trying not to act camp, trying not to drop a wrist, trying not to let anyone find out their secret, trying not to get bullied at school, so acting different, hyper-vigilant all the time. That's the exact opposite of intimacy. And suddenly they're all grown up, trying to negotiate smartphone apps, normalized drug use, uh, HIV, risky sex, danger, uh, being their sex lives being associated with danger, and they're trying to incorporate intimacy into all of this to inform their sex and romantic lives, but with no frame of reference. It's important to be clear, a minority of gay men are active on the chemsex scene, but it's a big problem for a small number of people. There's no proof of a causal link between chemsex and HIV, but infection rates are on the rise. Why is the message about condom use failing to get through? And then we know that that in turn is related to the risk of transmission. Sheena McCormack so is leading the UK's first trial of pre-exposure prophylaxis, or PrEP for short. The medication Truvada blocks the replication of the HIV virus and acts as a barrier to infection. She says the results of the study could mark a watershed in the battle to fight HIV. What were the results for the group that was using PrEP? Oh, a profound reduction uh, in HIV. Um, so compared to those that had no PrEP, we saw very few infections in those uh, that could have had to been taking PrEP. And in fact, in none of the cases could we really be confident they were taking drug at the time they caught HIV. So in some ways, it did look as if the drug itself was 100% um, effective. And that matches with other studies that have been done um, when you look only at people who've got drug that you can measure in their blood, you know they're taking the tablet, we don't see any infections in, 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 in that case. So it really is a very powerful biological tool, but it remains a tool that depends on human behaviour, because people have to take it. Zia has used illegal drugs to facilitate sex for many years. Mephedron is his substance of choice, and he's dabbled with GHB in the past. As part of the PrEP trial, he's one of the first men in the UK to receive the medication Truvada. The trial was open exclusively to gay men who had had condomless sex in the recent past and recognised that they were likely to have sex without a condom again in the near future. I want to know why Zia is so casual about not using condoms. I guess like a factor is that it feels more intimate, potentially. Um, yeah, there's this kind of like, you're in the moment and then there's this real interruption in like, having to run and like find a condom, find a lubricant, uh, open it, put it on. It's just like this real interruption of flow. Did your condom use go up or down? For the last two months, um, it's kind of been low again. So probably like 50% of the time. 50% of the time yeah, you yeah. would use a condom? Yeah, yeah. Um, but then, yeah, I guess it's like varied over the year. Um, but yeah, at the moment, I guess it's quite low because I've just kind of relaxed into being on prep maybe and kind of like accepted that particular risks are less of a factor for me now. But there is an argument that you could just use condoms and perhaps do less chems. Why, why is that not an option? This advice has been out there for like, you know, 25 years now, the whole of my lifespan, and it's just not working. Like infection rates are going up. And it's about having a multiple, like multiple choices and multiple options to really not be sanctimonious and judgmental and be like, just use condoms, but actually think about what is an effective way of stopping the spread of HIV. Um, and it seems like Truvada is like an amazing drug that has a lot of potential for, for impacting that. All the public health experts I spoke to whilst making this report told me the gay community is extremely well informed about HIV prevention and condom use. But some people choose not to use condoms. The rise of chemsex means that choice is more loaded than ever for men who view their sex lives as intrinsically connected to drug taking. For Kiran, PrEP has come too late. He's HIV positive and his chem use will impact the rest of his life. I was in the grip of an addiction. It kind of rewired my brain and it stopped me caring about myself. It stopped me um, wanting to protect myself. 
When did you stop? It was about 14 months ago. The last time I used it, it just made me really sick. I was sick for a whole week afterwards. I was sort of laid up in bed, had to take the whole week off work, which was longer than I've had to take before. And strange enough, the week after that, someone told me that they were in a 12-step recovery program. And I just said, yeah, look, please, I just want to come along. So yeah, I got into that and I feel kind of like quite alive again.